Hey everyone, we're going to take a look at how to safely store password data inside of Couchbase server using the Java programming language. Uh, and I decided to make this tutorial because it's, it's a good thing to do. You should never store your password data as plain text in any database. Uh, so no SQL or relational, there's no exception. Uh, so this, this is a conveniently easy tutorial on how to uh, make sure that your, your password data is safe. Uh, so you'll notice on my screen I do have uh, a boilerplate Java application uh, on my screen. Um, this this application was created using Gradle rather than Maven, although it really doesn't matter what you use. Uh, what you will need though is you will need Couchbase Server installed, um, and then in order to get the uh, Couchbase Server SDK for Java, uh, so we'll look at my build.gradle uh, file, and you'll notice on line 26 I've included the SDK. Uh, for Gradle, and it would look very similar for Maven as well. Uh, you would add a, a Maven dependency for this uh, with the version and the um, group. Uh, likewise, I've also added Spring Security uh, Core, uh, which is how we're going to be using the bcrypt class. Uh, so in this particular tutorial, uh, instead of storing data as plain text, we're going to be using bcrypt to hash the passwords, so not encrypt them, hash them. Uh, because if you encrypt them, uh, you have the assumption that they're able to be decrypted, whereas this doesn't apply for hashing. Uh, so those are the two dependencies already added in my project. So going back to main.java, uh, this is where we're going to see some sample uh, code and to make this happen. So the first thing that we want to do is we probably want to establish a connection to Couchbase server. Uh, so that can be done doing the following. So we can say um, cluster cluster equals couchbase cluster dot create and then at which point we would pass in the uh, server that we want to connect to so in this case we want to connect to uh, couchbase colon slash slash and then my couchbase instance is running on a different machine so I'll say 10 dot zero dot one dot sixty two so this is this the machine that's hosting it um, what we'll also do uh, is we'll establish a con uh, an open bucket. So we'll, we'll open up a particular bucket. So we'll say bucket, bucket equals, and then we'll say cluster dot open bucket. And then in this case, I want to open up a bucket called example. And I'll show you what this looks like in, in the Couchbase dashboard as well. Now in certain circumstances, uh, in my case, probably more specifically because I'm on uh, a weird setup, uh, you may need to increase the timeout when you're connecting to the Couchbase cluster. Um, so otherwise you'll get maybe a timeout exception. Uh, if this is the case, and we're going to just uh, do this just in case, uh, we want to extend that, that timeout. So what we can do is we can say Couchbase environment. And we can say env equals default Couchbase environment. dot builder and then what we can do is we could say connect timeout and by default it'll be set to five seconds um, which is generally like more than enough but in, in my case I've I've had experiences where uh, my machines don't like to talk to each other so I'm gonna set this to 10 seconds and that's in milliseconds and we'll say dot build and we'll close that off uh, we'll pass it into uh, the create method, we'll say env, uh, and then we should be good to go with the extended timeout. And you should try it without the timeout first, um, because you never know, it might work for you. Uh, it generally works for me in production, but uh, on, on local machines, it, it I don't know, sometimes it's weird. But that's all right, we're, we're still going to press along. Uh, so with our bucket open, let's go ahead and make sure that we've created that bucket um, inside of the Couchbase dashboard. So if you open up the Couchbase dashboard, you'll see something like this. And then you want to click on data buckets. And in this case, I already have a bucket called example. And it's empty for me. Uh, but if you don't have a bucket, or maybe you don't want to use a bucket called example, you could really use whatever you want. Um, just go ahead and create something to use. So going back into the code, what we want to do is we want to start creating data. So we have our, we have our open bucket. Uh, let's let's create some data. 
Uh, so we can do the following. Let's go ahead and say JSON object. We'll say data equals JSON object dot create. Uh, and at which point we can go ahead and add some data. And it's going to be very simple. No, nothing too complicated here, but we're going to say put username. And we're going to say the username is going to be my name and we're boy. Uh, we can also say put, we'll say password. And the password value, let's just call it password for now. This is a plain text password. And this is actually what a lot of people use as their password, if you if you can believe it. It's, it's a terrible thing to do, but let's just uh, leave plain text password as password and close that off with a semicolon. With our JSON document, uh, JSON object created, uh, now we need to create a JSON document out of it. So we can say JSON document, let's call this document, equals JSON document dot create. And what we want to do is we want to give it an ID. In this case, uh, I mean, you could do whatever you want for an ID. I'm just going to call it Enraboy. And for the data, I'm just going to pass in that JSON object and save it. Uh, but it's not saved into Couchbase yet. We actually have to insert it. But instead of inserting it, uh, we're actually going to do an upsert in this case. Uh, so if uh, if the data, if the key does not exist, we'll, it'll create one. Uh, if it does exist, it'll replace that document. So we're going to say bucket.upsert. We're going to pass in that document and save it. So at this point, it should save into Couchbase server. And we could actually validate that uh, with our terminal or your IDE or whatever you're using to run this application. I'm going to say Gradle run. And it failed because I forgot to uh, import uh, the necessary items for this default Couchbase environment. So what we want to do is let's go ahead and, and import one more line here. Import com.couchbase.client.java.env and then asterisk. So save it and let's try it again. If you're using an IDE, you probably won't have to go through all the drama that I'm using in Atom, uh, my editor that I'm using right now, uh, but it's totally up to you. So it did run, it built, it was successful. If I go into Couchbase dashboard uh, and hit refresh, the data is there. Uh, so the key being uh, Enraboy, and I have a password, which is just password, and a username, which is Enraboy. And if any administrator goes into this database and looks at this document, they'll have my password right away. So that's really bad. Or there's other ways that you can get it as well. But what we want to do is we want to resolve that. So going back into our code, uh, what we're going to do now is we are now going to use bcrypt to hash our password. Uh, so going to where we say password, uh, instead of saying plain text password, what we're going to do is we're going to say bcrypt dot hash pw password so if if we decide we wanted to use that same very weak password let's let's leave it in there and we're going to define a salt a bcrypt salt all right so now let's see what happens when we run it so i'm going to run it again and it failed so it failed because it's not bcrypt with a with a lowercase c uh, it should be bcrypt with an uppercase c Save it, run it again. All right, it ran successfully. So going back into Couchbase dashboard, if I refresh the screen, uh, the password is now this crazy long value, this hash. And there's still only one document because we did an upsert. So it, it replaced the document when we, when we ran it the second time. Uh, so if, if any administrator or somebody goes in and looks at this, they're not gonna know what to do with that. It's, it's pretty useless to them. Uh, but how do you actually validate that now the new password that you that your user enters to log in maybe matches whatever is hidden inside of this hash? Uh, so now we actually have to use a few new features here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a lookup and we're going to do a check password or a check PW. Uh, so after the upsert, we're going to we're going to continue this flow. Uh, what we're going to say is we're going to say JSON document. No, we can actually say uh, document equals bucket dot get and let's get it by the ID which is Enraboy. So we're, we're getting the document now we're storing it inside of this old document um, and we can move along at this point. Uh, so we're gonna say if doc not equals to null 
and I don't know why I keep calling it doc, it's document. Um, we can actually say system dot out dot print print line. And we're just going to print out the document, and then we're going to do some comparisons against it. So let's go ahead and say uh, print line, and let's say document dot content. So that's what it'll print out first. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to say uh, system dot out dot print line. And we want to do our bcrypt check. So we can say bcrypt with a capital C dot check PW. We're going to provide it a password to check against. So let's go ahead and, and enter the wrong password. So this is not a right password. Wrong password is not correct. And now we want to say document dot content dot get string password because that's the property that's stored inside of Couchbase server. Uh, so just to be a little more clear, let's go ahead and say uh, wrong, well, let's say uh, check. We'll do a new line here. We'll actually copy this. Um, and in this case, we'll enter the correct password. So in theory, it should print out what's in the database. It should print out false because it is not the correct password and it should print out true because it is the correct password. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Perfect, so it ran. Uh, it printed out our document, which it should have. It printed out false and it printed out true exactly how we expected it. So now if you ever were to create a login function or even a register, so let's, let's go down the line. If we were to create a register function, something that registers a user, uh, we would immediately hash that password when we save it. We would we would hash it in the Java code and it would be safe in Couchbase server. Uh, when they want to log in, maybe we have a login function. Uh, they provide a password and a username, maybe. Uh, that communication happens over SSL, so that password is transferred to the database uh, securely. And then what happens is that password will be swapped out here, this string, and it would compare whatever that password is that the user provided now versus the password that uh, is hashed in the database. And then you could, resp if it was true, you could say, you know what, this, this user matches, let's log in. Um, if, this, if it doesn't match, you can say, you know what, incorrect password um, and, and be done with it. So um, the, the data is very secure in this, in this sense um, and it's much better than storing it in as plain text.